In 1909, the U.S. government sued Coca-Cola for adding a harmful ingredient to their drinks, caffeine. The federal government claimed that caffeine was a poison and habit-forming drug that produced mental and motor deficits. Coca-Cola then hired psychologist Harry Hollingworth to study the effects of caffeine. Harry and his wife, Lita, conducted nine studies over a 40-day period. Participants were chosen based on good health and then split into abstainers and regular users of caffeine. All studies were double-blind. They began by studying perception and association. The color naming test exposed participants to a color and required them to say the color aloud. There were 10 cards for each of the 10 colors to total 100 cards. The assistant would flash one card at a time and offer feedback after each response with a yes or a no. If the participant was incorrect, they would have to provide the correct answer before proceeding. The score was calculated by how long it took to name aloud all 100 cards and was measured to fifths of a second. The naming opposites task had a board with two columns of 25 words each. Participants needed to say the word which had the opposite meaning of the word written on the board. After each word, the assistant provided a yes-no feedback and a correct response was needed to proceed down the list which controlled for variability in linguistic knowledge. Time was measured to fifths of a second to correctly say all 50 words. To control for memory effects, each trial had words that were given in a new order. The calculation test had 50 cards containing a double digit number between 20 and 80. All numbers ending in zero were omitted. Numbers were in random order and appeared only once. By signal, the participants were required to flip a card and add 17 to the number on the card. Assistance provided a yes-no feedback and a correct response was needed to proceed. The total time needed to complete all 50 calculations was measured to fifths of a second. In the intensive condition, there were 75 calculations where 25 were repeats and then 100 calculations where 50 were repeats. They then studied discrimination, attention, and judgment. The familiar size-weight illusion had 14 cylindrical objects of the same size but varying weights, between 15 and 80 grams. There was one weight called the standard weight that was several sizes larger than the other weights and weighed 55 grams. Participants needed to choose which object matched the standard in weight while disregarding size. This experiment yielded no differences between the caffeinated and not uncaffeinated conditions and was discontinued after four weeks. The cancellation test had a printed sheet with 100 single digit numbers. The sheet contained 20 lines with each number appearing five times per line. The participant started at the top left corner and had to cross out one specific number on the entire sheet. They found that 20 lines caused too much eye strain, so it was reduced to 10 lines and then later raised to 15. The discrimination and choice reaction test required participants to use their left forefinger to press a key as fast as possible when shown a red disc and use their right forefinger when shown a blue disc. There were preliminary trials in order to ensure all participants understood the task and they were warned against making false responses. They then conducted motor tests. The steadiness test required holding a metal rod inside a brass-lined hole with an outstretched arm. Every contact between the rod and the hole was recorded by an automatic electric counter. The counter was sensitive enough to detect even a minor twitch. The tapping test used the same rod as in the steadiness test. The participants had to tap a piece of metal with the rod 400 times as quickly as possible. The time was recorded to fifths of a second for the first 200 taps and for the second 200 taps. The three-hole test of combined accuracy and speed had a plate with three brass-lined holes in the shape of an equilateral triangle. The task was to insert the metal rod into the three holes until 100 insertions had been made. Contact with the hole made an electrical connection that was recorded by the automatic counter. The rod was held in the left hand because the right hand was just used for the tapping test. The assistant measured the time to fifths of a second. When called upon to reveal his findings in court, Hollingworth explained that caffeine appeared to be a mild stimulant for cognitive and motor performance with no harmful effects. Coca-Cola ultimately won the case against the federal government and continues to use caffeine in their beverages to this day, although to a lesser concentration.